Okay, it just happens to be uh, Saturday afternoon, May the 31st, 2014. Yes, it is the end of the month. The end of the merry month of May. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we haven't had a spring, and we're going to go right into summer as of Monday. We're going to have a whole week of 80s. Well, or thereabouts. we had a absolutely insane... Uh, uh, fluctuating, uh, erratic, uh, spring-like weather. Mm -hmm. Some days were hot, some days were uh, oh. cold. I mean, literally freezing cold. Yeah, la, 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 la. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, we've had spring days where it was hot here and um, up in upstate New York, uh, you know, like Orange County, which is, is not really up upstate. They had freezing temperatures, yeah. you know, and it, it, it's just been with with storms and with tremendous amount of rain on the entire East Coast, and yeah, uh, which is very different from the from the horrible drought that's taken place in Western America, California, Arizona, Texas, destroying the uh, United States agricultural industry. Mm -hmm. But in a way, I am happy that when something hurts, big agra. I know it, it. It's going to affect our food supply, but uh, when it, when it hurts genetically modified produce, and it hurts Big Agra, and it hurts Monsanto, anything that hurts these evil entities, is a pleasure to me. You know what would be a pleasure to me if these charters if of God's, these big yeah. entities were revoked. Yeah, and if Godzilla was real and he, and he destroyed all conservative Republicans and... and um, I don't think he was that selective. And, uh, <laughs> and sleazy, corrupt politician, uh, uh, two-party system corporatists of today. If Godzilla, you know, just targeted them like, like, a, like, a, like, like some of the smart weapons they have in the military, <laughs> just, you know... Like Targeted them with a laser beam. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, selectivity. Let me get over get over with um, the formalities. Let me get through. That's better grammar. Let me let me get through the formalities. On our oh, by the way, I gotta let people know who we are before I do the formalities. Welcome to uh, Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. I am your host, James P. Madonna, and I uh, am coming to you live and recorded from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey, and I will now pipe aboard my illustrious longtime uh, co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, and I will do that with my authentic bosun's whistle. Easy, so the dog don't bark. Well, we know the dog is going to bark. Now, whether or not he shuts up is another story. Ooh. Right now, it's very peaceful. <whistles> Arr! Oh Welcome aboard our uncensored, hard-hitting truth starship newsletter censored. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, how are you feeling this week, sir? Uh, good. Uh, the Starship is heading for, as I said last week, the Zeta Reticula <laughs> Quadrant. Galaxy. Sounds like a reticulated Whatever. python. Hey, you know, they have a new thing now. They, uh, they put on you pythons to massage you. <laughs> To give, you a to give you a chiropractic that adjustment? That would give me stress, man. That would give you a chiropractic adjustment. Sure. And, they, and they put one of the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, yellow ones on, too. That's an albino Burmese, Burmese python, yeah. which is just as big and just as strong as the regular. Uh, yeah, but if they're putting three and four on this per person, being mis what's to prevent them from entangling these people and squeezing them to death? Asphyxiating them. Yeah. Well, that, that cures their, their uh, medical problems because they're dead. <laughs> but, uh, hey, that's, how Republi that's the Republicans' uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Affordable Care Act. 
Well, we you, cure your medical problems by killing you. They, they showed a, a photo of, um, it looked like a reticulated python, but in India, um, a, um, a, a tab, the town drunk fell asleep outside and was swallowed whole by this reticulated python and uh, people were just like walking what? by walking by, looking at it. What about people helping them when they saw the python swallowing the town drunk? I mean, couldn't somebody do something about it? I'm sure they could, but cheapers creepers, isn't a human being too big for a python? Not this one. Not this one, unless they, unless it's like the, with the United States, uh, you know, the uh, if somebody is conservative or or halfway conservative, um, which is like moderate, they they homeless people and winos and hobos, whatever you want to call them, they're invisible, worthless. They're, they're worthless because they don't have any. Well, literally, they're worthless because they, but you know, they they equate. A monetary possession with human value, human worth. A Republican would allow the uh, python to swallow the uh, the homeless man. Now that you mentioned that, subject, they would love it. I believe it was day before yesterday. Uh huh. The homeless people down in Lakewood, New Jersey, in the tent city. Yeah, what's going on? Had to get out. Had now, to. where they were going to go was up in the air, but they had to get out. Now, the, the woods of, uh, was this, did this land belong to the town of Lakewood? That's right. So they, they, they were evicted. Out. They were evicted from their tents, living Absolutely. in the woods with no running water, no electricity, no heat furnace, no air conditioning. They were evicted from the woods. And of course other cities are making it a crime to feed the homeless. And to be homeless. Like North Carolina. Mm -hmm. North Carolina, South Carolina. And all of these people would claim to be Christian. And who created this poverty and, and, and all these homeless people? I'll give you one guess. The very politicians that outlawed the homelessness. The very Conservative politicians, corrupt, and who are created, be, who are behind the VA scandal and systemic uh, corruption, the Republicans, the Republicans for cutting, 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 constantly, yeah. the budgets of the VA, and I'd be damned, and, and the U.S. media, they're always giving face time to these. Conservatives never, oh, Mr. George never to a Bush. never to a progressive or or an independent or a Democrat. How do all photo ops with the military, while he sent them on a stupid mission in Iraq and Afghanistan? A a an empty mission. There was no mission. It was missionless. That's right. But there was corporate. Uh, uh, but there was a lot of money. To there's be made. a corporate agenda. Yeah, for Dick Cheney. Money to be made for Halliburton and the, the Blackwater and all the other you know uh, private contracts. They televised uh, some statements that Dick Cheney made, and uh, when he talks, it looks like he's he's uh, his teeth are his mouth is going yeah. sideways, or yeah. and his teeth are glued together like he's like he's uh, growling or or um, like he's constipated, you know. And you could see, you could just sense the negativity pouring out of that man. Well, he's calling Obama weak. Oh, weak. And, he's, and he said that uh, Hillary Clinton needs to be subpoenaed. Meanwhile, him and GW are guilty of so many war crimes, right? Yes, I mean, yes, in reality. Yes, yes. Not, not, not charged with, but in reality. Yes. No, they didn't get charged because Obama, they stuck their nose in there when Spain, I believe it was, Spain was going to bring him up before the world court. Oh, ah. he got pardoned, right? Well, in a sense. In other words, Obama you, let him off the hook. In other words, the world tribunal, so to speak. The world wanted to uh, convict them, uh, and well, they should have been. Just like Mr. Kissinger, he still runs around, but if he gets out of the United States and they find out, he's going to be cap captured. 
You know, uh, Barack Obama, I heard uh, President Barack Obama recently signed the Monsanto Protection Act. Yes. Which is kind of shocking that a Democrat would would, no, do, would do that. No, it ain't. With He's such not a Democrat. He's evil, a de pit. demonic entity as Monsanto. Yes. Well, I'd like probably go to any uh, corporation. Well, Dr. Bill, I think Monsanto is also behind banning small family farms in Michigan. They, you can't have a small family farm in Michigan. You can't... Motherfucker. You hear that? Little kid, a little punk on a motorcycle? A scooter, rather? Hey, life goes on. I think um, the small family farm, even if it's on a small scale, I don't blame a family that has a home and some land to uh, want to uh, save money on, on expensive grocery bills and, and, and produce organic, healthy food for, for their family. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No, there isn't. In fact, it's uh, as old as America. I'm not sure what town it is. Like that. I believe it's in New Jersey. They just stopped the guy who wants to raise six chickens so he can have fresh eggs. Six chickens. Six chickens. Well, Michigan banned beekeeping too. There you go. They want, and I think it's because they want you, well, Monsanto wants you, and the Monsanto probably paid the politicians. They want everyone in Michigan to get their food, their toxic food, from the supermarket, including the, the pasteurized honey that's probably worthless yeah. and all the uh, toxic GMO food from the supermarket so mm -hmm. th I think that's why this law came into play well of course to protect the big corporations right okay now let's move on it's, it's really appalling it's, 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 it's despicable you know. Secretary of State John Kerry put down quite severely put down American hero and patriot Edward Snowden uh -huh. by calling him a traitor and that he should man up and man return up and, come and back to the US and yeah. return to the United yeah. States to face criminal charges and here's a man John Kerry that way back when when he was running for president he was asked uh, what he would do about all the uh, outsourcing of American jobs and he said well I don't think there's anything I can do about that Really? Well, he also he also was very lax about uh, coming back and attacking the Swift voters, who Swift voted him, who who made his uh, heroic uh, efforts uh, whilst he was in the military uh -huh. into crap. Right. And he didn't do anything per se. Oh, that whole thing. Back at that him. whole. Um, you know. That the his stories about Vietnam were. Yeah. Well, well yeah. he was a hero in Vietnam, but the Swift voters made him into a piece of crap. Well, and he let it go. They usually, I don't know. I'm, I, I mean, this proves that uh, that many um, Democrats are corporatists. Because why would he, why would he call John Kerry a traitor, guilty of treason, no. or whatever? No. And, and he should face criminal charges for, for, for what? For protecting we the people? Exactly. For being a, a, a true patriot and a hero? Exactly. <laughs> Everything is nice, topsy-turvy. Nice, de nice Democrat. <laughs> Everything is topsy-turvy today. Just like in the, the uh, book and movie 1984 with George Orwell. Yeah. It's all topsy-turvy. Like in there, uh, oh, 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 what? Uh, yeah. War was love, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So what you speak. So what you're saying is we we live in a bizarre world. Yeah. Well, like uh, like uh, George Bush wanting to allow more arsenic into the air, they make a clean, clean, uh, clear skies amendment. <laughs> That's what they call the law. Jeez. Clear skies amend. Yeah. Which is the total opposite of what Clear Skies Amendment uh, yeah, means. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Saving the best for last. Uh, let me have a sip because I need to clear my throat with my cold, ice cold elixir. Um, before I get into this 
this big one. It's big. It's big and it's, I saved it for last for good reason. Blood, blood, blood. In here, I have ice cold water. I have some uh, lime juice concentrate. I have a tablespoon of coconut vinegar with the mother from, from uh, the Philippines. Um, and I have uh, a packet of stevia. And I have a, uh, an, an even half a teaspoon of uh, sodium bicarbonate. Because of the miraculous articles I've been reading about lemon with sodium of bicarbonate to alkalize the body because diseases love an, an acid environment mm. like cancer. Mm. There's even been stories of somebody curing their uh, malignant melanoma or basal cell carcinoma with uh, by mixing baking soda with coconut oil mm. and creating an alkaline environment for the for the skin cancer and uh, other cancer stories of um, of tumors shrinking by a substantial amount from alkalizing the body. I am also the host of Holistic Health Talk, which is right now my largest Facebook group, so feel free to join it, along with uncensored, hard-hitting truth. Um, Facebook group which is connected to the show. Okay, here's the big one. I look in in the mail a couple days ago and uh, lo and behold, lo and behold, what should I find? Now, this first part didn't surprise me because they send it every year. New Jersey voter registration application from Trenton, New Jersey, Division of Elections, <coughs> Post Office Box 304, Trenton, New Jersey. All right, this comes before the same year of any election, any uh, major election, which is coming up, of course, November of uh, 2014, okay? All those demons in, in Congress, the Republicans, are up for re-election. But this is not what upset me and many people, many members of our groups. What upset me and set my blood pressure sky high, even though my blood pressure is normal, is this. Every four years, there is now a fee. You have to pay a fee as an American citizen to vote in the United States of America. This is absolutely uncalled for, despicable, insane you to I, it is supposed to be your right as an american resident and citizen to vote that and looks you, like your car registration this yeah it looks like the um auto registration yeah, yeah it's got it i think it even has this is even my uh my license uh my driver's license number uh -huh. yeah it's, yeah it looks you like sure any car registration no i got that also oh, Lord. this here it says Pay this amount, all right? Um, um, Insane. Insane. But I, I will. Uh, William H. Moore of the Third told me to uh, check it out, make sure it's not a scam, and uh, it's totally insane. I, I hope it. I hope it's not for real. But I will. If it's not for real, I will let you people know. Or if it's um, 
it was a mistake, I'll let you know, but the whole concept of uh, voter registration involving a fee. Well, they did that to the blacks. It, it, Old tax. Is, is obviously a way, a sneaky, sleazy way for Republicans to keep low income and poor people from voting. From, from voting Democrat. That's right. That's what it is. That's right. Keeps them from voting Democrat, and, that, and it's a sneaky way to do it. Hey, and they won't have bathrooms available for lines. Ah, there's no there's port, lines. no porta potties yeah, when they go and vote. Do, 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 do. So, I will, um, I will keep you people posted um, about this and. Um, off the air, I have to talk to Reverend Bill about something. Uh, but, uh, okay, now, that's it. But how about that John Kerry? Boy, he's got some pair of balls, man. Well, you know, showing his true colors. Was interviewed by uh, uh, one of the leading reporters uh, just the other day. Mm -hmm. And he failed to ask. <sighs> the proper questions with Mr. Stone, uh -huh. as usual, you know, and he too uh, went on that same tact about, uh, you know, coming back, facing the law, which is garbage. Yeah, that's like saying, supposing you were in Nazi Germany, Nazi, Nazi Germany, yeah. and you were a freedom fighter. Right. Would you go to a tribunal or court in Nazi Germany to face the law? Hell no. Hell no, Baba. Uh-uh. Uh, Only a fool. They'll skin you alive. It's exactly. <laughs> kangaroo court, baby. He should kangaroo. Hey, by the way, they're killing. They want to kill kangaroos in Australia. They want to cull the herd. Why? They feel there's too many. Too many? They want to kill about 1,600. Why? Call the herd. I hear, too big. I think kangaroos are, are raiding some farms. Some some big Whatever farms. Whatever they're doing, they want to, you know, call the herd. Hey, these are animals that get hungry like us. They, they want to eat. They want to eat. Uh, it, 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 the, I got news for them. The kangaroos were in, in, that, in those regions thousands of years before uh, the... Um, Humor. Was it the Botany Bay when when uh, uh, when England used uh, Australia as a penal colony? Yeah. And they uh, and they stole the land. What else is new? They stole the uh, Australia from the the native indigenous people, the Aborigines, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and and enslaved them and and, uh, and mistreated them and and were were uh, uh, guilty of racism towards them. Stole their land, you know. And uh, hey. The kangaroos were there before the Australian government. One of the religious nuts, the big uh, big boys, the other day, was yakking about the uh, the Indians in this country, Native Americans, had no right to the land, had no right to this, to yeah. this, to that, to pop, to pop, to pop, to pop. Yeah, I know. I I read that. Who was that? It wasn't Robert? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, ridiculous statement. Yeah, of course it was. But uh, <laughs> they do it. Oh, right. because God allowed them to do that. The promised land, baby, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that, that jackass uh, Rubio made a, made, a, made a statement. Um, the hypocrite. Oh, he went he, back on his uh, uh, immigration bill. He made it up and then didn't vote for it. Yeah. Oh, he made a statement about about immigrants uh, that after they become legal immigrants, they should not receive any uh, health care from the United States government for a few years after they become citizens. They. It's almost like he wants to punish immigrants. Exactly. But are That's these immigrants all of about. are these immigrants of color from yeah. south of the border that he's punishing, or is he punishing even European immigrants? Nah, they don't touch the Europeans. They're brown. 
so these are these Republicans Round are people. showing their true colors of racism. Of course, but their supporters don't recognize this. What's his first name? Marcus Rubio. Marco. Marco, the douchebag. Uh, he has a douchebag face, just like all of them. It's like uh, that other guy, that other guy. Uh, Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz looks like the. With his he nose. looks like a puppet, like it, Paul Ryan. He looks like the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. They have, they, yeah, Paul, yeah, Paul Ryan. Uh, unbelievable, funny, unbelievable. Funny. It's they're so funny. obvious. See, this is the point. Republicans are so obvious in their agenda and and who they are. They they are they obnoxiously do not hide who they really are. Chris Christie's like that. He doesn't hide things that well. Chris Christie has taken money from the rebate program to give raises to his people and to uh, plug the shortfall in the budget. Mm -hmm. And people don't do anything. People don't do anything and there's an organization out there called the Blue New Jersey that all of a sudden, you know, they care about what Chris Christie is doing. Well, why the hell did so many Democrats re-elect Chris Christie in the first place if they are so against what Chris Christie is for and what he has been doing? Because he's doing the same things in his um, his last term that he did in his first term. So, you know, don't be a hypocrite. Now, now you care about the people of New Jersey. Blue New Jersey is fighting the, the evil ogre, Chris Christie. But guess what? A lot of Democrats supported Chris Christie and stuck a knife in Barbara Bono's back, who incidentally kicked, she kicked Chris Christie's ass in the two televised debates. I watched them and she destroyed him. He was like Ralph Cramden. Well, he's also fat like Ralph Cramden, but but he was like a puppy dog. And Chris Christie is the, is the bully of all politicians. And she handled him. He didn't know what to say. He, he had no comeback. He didn't even get angry with her and defensive. You know how tough he is uh, at town hall meetings? Uh, I'm through with you. I'm done with you. Something I'm done like with that. You, yeah. if you, If you disagree with him, I'm done with you. Be, uh, keep quiet or I'll, or I'll have you removed. Uh -huh. That's what George W. Bush, uh, when he was in office, had. The Secret Service would, uh, if anybody were going to protest against them, they moved them way, a couple of blocks away or whatever. Yeah, even if it wasn't a heckle, even even if it was like a protest. Well, I guess that a could be a t-shirt. A t -shirt? Even a t-shirt. Really? Yeah. Boy, he he he's, he loves himself. He's he don't want anybody criticizing uh, criticizing a Republican. Yeah. They're like dictators. They are dictators. That is their that is their modus operandi. Well, Bernie they want to be in total control. Bernie Sanders says he's afraid that we might be turning into an uh, ol oligarchic We're already society. Well, yeah, he should have come out with it and just said it. We oh. already are a, a plutocracy and an oligarch. What the hell does Citizens United tell you? When it's given all the power to the rich to control elections. Right. What does that tell you? We don't need anything else. You know, things are... See, people assume that politics and the way uh, a big, powerful, rich, first world country is run is, is much more complex to the average person than it really is. It, it's really, you know, smart economics and doing the right thing, it involves a lot of common sense. It, it doesn't involve uh, a Nikola Tesla to run the United States, you know, even though we should be that lucky to, to have him s still alive. But anyway, you know, it's like, the fact of the matter is, it's not the, the social programs that's hurting the economy, it's the fact that the United States 
as a revenue problem. It's just hasn't been collecting fair share of taxes from the rich. That's correct. There's a, a lack. And Not, uh, of course, sp military spending and and giving away welfare subsidies to the rich that that should not happen at all. I mean, high bloated military spending, and the rich should never get any any subsidies and handouts. But you know, it's uh, that would totally wipe out poverty in the United States if we had the uh, the old tax rate. You know, of Eisenhower, Truman and Eisenhower. You wouldn't even need that. You would just need a fair. And besides, you know, I'm tired of these people uh, that, that, that are always against taxes and taxes. The reason we put in the income tax in America mm -hmm. was to tax those who had the money. Mm -hmm. If you don't like high taxes, don't, don't make so much money. Simple as that. It's that simple. Don't make so much money. It's true. Well, you people are probably wondering what this is. You've seen it before. In America, we do not have trickle-down economics. That was a lie. We have, actually, we have siphoned up to the elitist, to, to the 1% economics. Siphon up economics never trickle down this is a siphon by the way siphon up economics got that you Something? know what else I think that thing could do I think Republicans Sex would toy? like that but no because could blow smoke up people's asses yeah, you're right about that uh-huh wait a minute no well yeah if you hold one side this wouldn't be this wouldn't be powerful enough to blow the kind of smoke. I'm that, sure it could be augmented. That Republicans to so. want to blow up people's are blowing up people's asses like those <laughs> idiots, uh, Ma and Pa kettles and Joe six packs living in all those red Wolf states. Wolf County in Kentucky. Oh the boy! The Republicans wouldn't take away what we need. Oh yes, they would. Oh really? They oh really? So so they you see how incredibly hoodwinked these people are. These people Deceived. live received Revelation twelve nine. What idiots! They live week to week, check to check. They don't have a pot to piss in. Some if of they them. have a job. They don't have a pot to piss in, and they still vote Republican because of first of all because of their insane religious cult uh -huh. that has nothing to do with the Bible. A lot of it has to do with that. And another thing is that they're just so stupid that they believe what Fox News tells them. Mm. And what people like uh, ugly old turtle face Mitch McConnell tells them. Mm -hmm. Or Rand Paul. Why? Don't they see that their standard of living and don't, is horrible and that they're struggling? And, worse and worse every year they as, as that, Americans. Don't they see? The proof is in the pudding. They see that, but they believe that the, the Republicans are working in their favor and will not take away what they need. That's what they said in a survey. Because they refuse to acknowledge that the Republicans have been lying to them. Hey, I'm convinced. I'm, I, I'm, I'm very convinced that the history books that I read in grammar school and high school contain many, li many lies. Well, of course they did. Sure. Founding fathers, big heroes, almost worshipped them. They were all slave owners. They were all slave owners and, uh, in, in a way, corporatists. But not with money, with real estate, right? Yeah, real estate. Yeah, so, anyway, now let us sink our teeth into these readings. Hey. Right. Elixir. The elixir of God. The nectar of the gods. Nectar of the gods? Yeah. Nah, nectar of the gods would be more like royal jelly or bee pollen. Or I am so utterly sick. I'm tired of seeing U.S. Senator John McCain 
and his fellow travelers talk, talk, talk some more on television and elsewhere as they beat their drums for more war, more expense, ah, more killing. More war profiteering, perhaps. Why does it always seem that these individuals can find the money to waste on misguided expressions of real manhood and then turn around and oppose things like the Obamacare? Or helping, that extension helping veterans too. Yeah. Of unemployment insurance. Yeah, unemployment. Saving our infrastructure. Providing financing for care of our veterans. It is purely obscene. Haven't we all had enough of perpetual war? Empires greater than ours have tried and failed. And lies too, perpetual lies to bring Afghanistan into the modern world. We too have failed. It is not because of our lack of will, but because the Afghans went to pursue their own, want to, excuse me, pursue their own destiny. We should let them and move on. These bring our men and women home from around the world. These people in these countries are not willing to give up their culture, and why should they? Because the United States says so? Pipeline! Pipeline! Money! Follow the money trail, like Jesse Ventura says. Right! Follow the right. money trail. Right, if right. If you want to find, uh, weed out the corruption, or or get, get your answers. Get the truth. Get the truth. Get the truth. Follow the money trail, mm -hmm. and in this case, these uh, these bogus wars uh, have a corporate uh, general, Major agenda. General Schmedley Butler. War is a racket. Uh, yeah, well, Iraq was probably uh, connected to. Well, they're all connected to oil, it seems, and the Koch brothers are very connected to oil. With this Keystone pipeline. Pipeline, yeah. Keystone pipeline. From Canada to Texas. And they want to send that oil to China, get it processed in China, and then bring it back to the United States and rip off the American mm -hmm, consumer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be paying world prices. Instead of like Saudi Arabia, like 31 yeah. cents a gallon. You know? And the Koch brothers want to kill uh, a green alternative energy, wind power. They want to. They want to tax. Uh, they want to uh, uh, penalize uh, solar energy. I was listening to Gary a while ago. Sun tax. Yeah. And Gary elucidated. It, it, it was talking about geothermal. Yeah. And was saying that we have a hell of a lot of geothermal that we can utilize. Yeah, but not by the super volcano because that's going to blow. <laughs> well, who knows? Well, maybe with old faithful, you know, yeah, the old geezer. Yeah, the old geezer, geyser. <laughs> that yeah. erupts every hour or whatever. Jellystone National Park. Jellystone. Oh, that was yeah. uh, Yogi, Yogi Bear. Hey, 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 boo -boo. Yeah, boo -boo. yeah, that's uh, uh, Yellowstone is the, the site of the super, the doomsday volcano. But um, ah, what the hell? Who knows when it's going to blow? So. Utilize it. If it blows, it the blows. The point is, we have a lot of alternatives to big oil. And Germany deserves a salute from with my lucky shillelagh. Salute! Germany is doing a splendid, outstanding job with the uh, alternative green energy. You know, they have office buildings that are totally uh, self-sufficient of uh, fossil fuels. <coughs> And they plan to be totally independent of uh, any fossil fuels by 2050. Well, so I salute a long time, Deutschland. All right. Deutschland, liebe Alice. They're setting the example to the world, and of course, it can be done. It can be That's done. The point. They're doing it. They they have a very progressive outlook. The, the leaders in Germany. And uh, of course, German scientists are the best in the world. 
and have always been. Yeah. Yeah. I've always been, yes, that's true. Nearly all of the state employees responsible for helping New Jersey Governor Chris Christie craft and promote his image from his press secretary to the staff that set up his town hall events <laughs> and put video clips on his appearances online got raises in recent months that averaged 23 percent so if you polish chris christie's apple if you if you uh, uh chris christie is what i call the king of crony capitalism, all Republicans are. If you're, if you, if you, if you worship them, it's like office politics. If you kiss his ass and you do things for them, for him, for him, then you, uh, you know. Then he takes he takes money from the elderly rebates and gives it to you as a raise. Okay? Oh, they always take from the, the needy. That's right. They, always take, they always take from down below and give it to up above. Always. Some of those who received the biggest raises temporarily left state government to work on Christie's re-election campaign last year. Then returned with new titles and higher salaries. A deputy press secretary in the governor's office who earned $75,000 last year before he left to serve as press secretary for the campaign now makes $110,000 a year as deputy communications director. Sounds like, um, it sounds like what my friend Ken Create was telling me about the people who run the city of Patterson, New Jersey. You got all the all the uh, oh all you got. They have so much crony capitalism. Uh. Friends, maybe relatives, you know, just pushing paper around, On the payroll. making uh, over a hundred grand a year. Yeah. You know, just not doing much work and sucking up all the money. And then they turn around and they and they cut everything. For the for the residents of the city, uh -huh. police force was cut. You know, it, it, this is what happens. They um, crony capitalism is the worst kind. The raises come as Christie is withholding more than 2.4 billion dollars in payments to the state pension fund because of revenue shortfalls. Mm. And Christie has delayed a property tax relief program that averages about $500 for seniors and some families. And the raises to the governor's staff appear to have happened around the same time Christie vetoed the minutes of the commission that oversees the Pineland. Bingo. You know, it's 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 really any sane person with uh, a little bit of intelligence mm -hmm. can see through a Republican, except these people that are spellbound. You know, uh, I'm not just going to blame red states. I'm, I'm I'm going to blame New Jersey too, because many people that. Uh, are normally opposed to any Republican, it supported a Republican, re elected Chris Christie, and sold out their voters. The people that vote Democrat were sold out. Mm -hmm. You know, so open your eyes, wake up, citizens, you know, wake up. Self protect professed conservatives have long outnumbered liberals in America. But the gap has narrowed significantly in the last four years, particularly on social issues. A shift 
that could harm GOP prospects in future elections. On social issues, the number of people who identify themselves as liberal is now almost equal to the share who say they are conservative. For years, conservatives held an advantage. As recently as 2010, conservatives had a 17-point advantage over liberals on social issues. Just as a rising conservative tide helped Republicans in 2010, a waning one, if it continues, could pose, po pose problems for the party in future elections. Republican strategists already worry about the gap separating the party from black, Latino, and Asian American voters, and an ideological gap would add to their burden. They didn't mention women. They got a gap between women voters, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I just can't see Unless you're, you're like one of those uh, those blonde witches from Fox News, I can't see a woman in her right mind voting Republican after all the statements that they've been they've yeah. been uh, saying uh, anti-female anti statements, and uh, and I can't picture, of course, any minority or low-income person voting Republican either. So, uh, and college kids. Yeah, forget about that. You know, uh, the where is it? The, well, the problem. Wait, wait, um, oh, geez, some country. <clears throat> oh man, I forget which country it is. Anyway, their students, their students for have for the last uh, a long time have been uh, demonstrating and this, that, and the other thing for free education, and their. Um, their El Presidente is a female, and uh, she now is going to go along with it. But before that, of course, she was going to be doing the whole austerity bit. The cut, 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 cut. Was it the Philippines? Or, or? No, no, no. It's a big country. Because they have to pay. Bigger country. Which I don't think is fair. They, they have to pay out of oh, pocket. Oh, well, yes, of course. They want to do that all over. A lot of third world countries uh, don't provide anything for their people, for, mm -hmm. for the poor, because they're corrupt. Yeah. You know, and they and they and I think the elections are uh, fixed, they're rigged. They're corrupt too. Yeah. Like like the election they had in Colombia, South America, where the uh, the uh, the conservative pro corporate candidate won. The friend of the previous president won yeah. by a landslide. Hey. How could anybody win? By a landslide with a predominantly poor population, um, if if it's not rigged, the word is corruption, I guess. Corruption. There you go. You know. So uh, you know, uh, Europe sets the example for the world. Measuring how people. Well, look at India. Uh, they call themselves a democracy over in India. Oh, they have a lot of corruption. And they just vo voted in. Yeah, of course. But uh, a lot of people vote over there. You mean they, they show up? They show up. As opposed polls to the United vote. States, where yeah, they don't it, show up. Yeah. And they just voted in this guy, to, uh, Prime Minister Modi. Modi, he says, since he can't. He can't talk to all the people all the time. He sends out doubles of himself. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> to get the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the take of the people, you know? That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Measuring how people identify themselves ideologically doesn't necessarily reveal how they will vote on specific issues or candidates. Many Americans do not have consistent ideologies. Moreover, a person who identifies as a moderate in a place like California might easily be considered liberal in Texas. But the shift 
in how Americans identify themselves on social issues has coincided with stronger support for liberal positions on issues including same-sex marriage, the death penalty, and legalized marijuana. Moreover, shifts in ideological identification do provide some clues to voting patterns. Typically, the public becomes more liberal when conservatives hold power and more conservative under liberal administrations. Apparently, reacting against the perceived excesses of whichever party holds power. That tendency proved dramatically true after President Obama's election. When a conservative flood began to gather in 2009 and take peak in 2010. Rudy Sylvester. Since then, however, the tide has ebbed. The conservative edge on social issues, four percentage points is the smallest Gallup has measured in 14 years. On economic issues, the gap was significant, with conservatives at 42% to 21% for liberals. With the liberal, excuse me, with 34% calling themselves moderate. But the conservative advantage has narrowed from 36 percentage points in 2010 to the current 21 points, matching the narrowest previous gap in 2020. 2007 and 2008, when Obama first won the presidency. Well, I don't see this uh, new liberal, uh, uh, you know. They don't get FaceTime. Think of a jiggy uh, the, coming off here. The media doesn't doesn't give them any FaceTime. You know and. Uh, when your uh, first two years, I think you told me, of uh, Obama's administration, yes. the Democrats had complete control of the entire government, and uh, they, you didn't see the, the rich being taxed, and you didn't see a single payer uh, uh, um, uh, health care reform, you know, uh, a, a national, uh, uh, national health care. You didn't see that? No. No, you didn't see any of those things. What does that tell you? Lemmings, what does that tell you? The whole two-party system is, is consists of corporatists. That's right. That are paid off. Back to Governor Christie. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He proposes to close a budget gap by using public pension funds and cutting property tax rebates. I am incensed the I represent you, but I don't really care about you. Yeah, There's a lion phony. Mine of our governor and of other state officials who stand idle and make deals while Christie pillages our pension plans and rebates. Christie has ravaged our state credit rating, penalized the elected officials who don't endorse him. Christie is a politician, not a businessman. Why not appoint savvy businessmen instead of post-election buddies? No. No, savvy businessmen are, are the, the root of the problem. Those are the CEOs that that make all this evil take place. Well, there is this idea amongst the Republicans and everything that the government is like a business. <laughs> it ain't. Everything's a business to them. Yeah. Government is not a business. You know, even my uncle, Uncle Phil, was was used to say, uh, you know, uh, elect people that used to be uh, CEOs of big companies, and yeah. they'll straighten the country out. Yeah. Oh, sure they will. Sure they will. Everybody will be like working for slave wages with no benefits. Because of his bungling, the cookie jar labeled pension fund 
will be robbed of more than a billion dollars. Being a state retiree who contributed for two decades, I lost cost of living adjustments and paid more to the pension plan so Democrats could appease Christie in 2011. And in return, the governor promised to stabilize the fund. Christie's tampering with the fund has destabilized, jeopardized financial stability for all retirees. Does he care? No. Will this win him his presidential nomination? No. I reached out to my state representatives to discuss this injustice. They include State Senator Nellie Powell, Democrat of North Haleden, Assembly members Benji Wimberly and Shavonda Sumter, both Democrats of Patterson. Oh, boy. I also reached out to Senate President Stephen Sony, Democrat of Gloucester. No one was there. But I left my information. In each instance, uh, the response was, I'll pass your message along. Sure. Thanks for nothing. I'll pass this I'll pass the same along on election day. Well, listen, it's very important to um, show up at the polls, people. I know a small percentage do, which is the wrong thing to do. But don't always assume that the other guy's vote will make up for your vote being missed. <clears throat> you know, everybody, if everybody thinks that way, then no, hardly anyone would vote. You know, oh, there's plenty of other people that will go vote. Eh, I'll just stay home. It's, it's the wrong way to think. It's very crucial to vote out the Republican Congress this November. Uh, it's extremely extremely important. you will be extremely sorry if, if they, they get the Senate if they take the Congress again they got the Congress no I mean November the house they got the house they got it now what about they got it now what about this November they got it now they got it you now you think they're gonna get rid of the, 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 the Democrats are gonna take the house forget it what they about, gerrymandered themselves in there. But what about They're looking for the Senate? But what about the um, all the crap that they've been pulling? I, I thought that many, many of them are up for re-election in the House. They gerrymandered themselves. What does that mean? They can't be voted out? No, they've made their districts into Republican districts, and they they're safe. So what's the point then? There is no point. The, the point, point is going, power. So what, what? Why are Americans going to the polls this November? Oh, please don't stop them from going now. No, I'm not stopping from going. But if if you can't vote, if you can't vote out Mitch McConnell, or or, or well, they can vote out Mitch McConnell. He hasn't. He's only won his primary. He's not up against uh, Grimes yet. That'll be in November. That'll be in November. Okay. 2014. All right. All right. Um, you ready for your lunch? Uh, I got seven or eight minutes here. I will maybe got a short one? Try, well, pretty short, I guess. All right. Atheists lost their case against the In God We Trust model on the nation's... I really care. Do people really read their money? It's a battle they have lost several times before. As court after court has affirmed that printing and engraving the country's motto on its money does not violate the United States Constitution. The plaintiffs, a group that included humanists, minor children, and longtime North Jersey resident Rosalind Newdow, argued before a federal appeals court that the words amount 
to a government endorsement of religion. Uh. Disallowed by the First Amendment to the Constitution. They claimed being forced to carry around a religious statement in their pockets and pocketbooks violated their constitutional rights. But the three-judge panel of the Second United States Circuit Court of Appeals in New York noted that the courts have long looked at the model not so much as the entanglement of government in religion, but as a more general statement of optimism and a reference to the country's religious heritage. The case was advanced by Newdow's son Michael, a physician and attorney from Sacramento, California, who graduated from Teaneck High School in 1970. His mother is a longtime resident of Rockley and Teaneck. The decision in Newdow versus United States pleased those who have worked to protect religious expressions in the public sphere. Americans need not be forced to abandon their religious heritage simply to appease someone's animosity toward anything that references God, said Rory Gray of the Alliance Defending Freedom. But it frustrated those who see religion creeping into places where they believe church and state should be separate. The group, American Atheists, which was not a party to the suit, said the court's reasoning, based on historical acceptance of the motto, is faulty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tradition is a terrible excuse for any behavior, said American Atheist spokesman David Muscato. If we allowed tradition to guide our views, what else would we uphold? Slavery? Denying the vote to women? Atheists have seen a spate of unfavorable rulings lately. Last week, a federal court in Kentucky rejected atheist suit against the IRS for the many breaks and privileges it offers churches and religious organizations. So they're like, um, they're pushing their way of thinking, proselytizing, so to speak, just as bad as the uh, right-wing evangelicals. You know, or, or the or the well, Islam, the Islamic radicals. They're, they're the eva evangelicals have had it their way a little bit too long. Oh, definitely. Well, well, you know what else? The atheists. But pushing in the legal sense, and we go back to Mr. Snowden on this. Yeah. Pushing on the legal sense, you see the courts; they're always against you. Kangaroo courts. Kangaroo courts. And in a five to four, Greece versus Galloway ruling this month, the Supreme Court affirmed the government bodies, that government bodies, may convene meetings with a prayer. You know, the atheists are doing something else. They're, they're, they want to eliminate this uh, cross at, at, at um, near uh, Ground Zero, near the 9-11 uh, the Memorial. There is a there is a uh, an erected yeah, cross, cross yeah. made out of uh, sheet metal from the World Trade Center. I think it's pretty cool, you know. It's I think it's great that they made a cross out of it. It's not taking up that much space, but the atheists want to remove it. Why don't they just live and let live and just let everybody every just respect everybody's different beliefs and everybody's just everybody's cults. Everybody's because uh, that's what the cross is. Well, it's nothing to do with Christianity. Well, well, people people need people need a symbol. No, they don't. They need symbols. That's what Jesus came to do away with. I mean, how do you identify anything? I mean, look at flags. God, Every country has a flag. Exactly, but God says you must worship Him spiritually. Well, you're not worshiping the symbol of the well. Like, all right, I, I, I'll admit. What does what, the uh, when Christians and Catholics pray, they're usually in front of an object. That's right. And what does the uh, yeah. one of the ten one of the ten commandments say? 
I know thou, thou shalt, shalt make no graven image unto the Lord. Right. So and when, that's what you're doing when they so, make the golden calf. So when they pray, they're supposed to pray in the, in the air, similar to Muslims praying when they when they kneel on the carpet. They're they're not. No, pray they do a bunch of ritual crap. No, but you they're must not, not pray ritually. But to they're God. not they're not praying to an object. They're, Who are they praying to? No, they're not. They're when they're on the when they're on the carpet facing Mecca, I believe. Six times a day. All right. You know. Okay. It's just fine. There's no no, there's fine. no object in front of them. There's no statue. There's an object in their mind. Of what? I don't know. The Allah. They are doing ritual. But they but they never well they have they have beads very similar to rosary. Whatever. To rosary. They have prayer beads. Yeah. So what if they, they pray six times a day? You know the Lord's Prayer? Yeah. Okay. Jesus gave that as an example. But he does not want you to do that all the time. That ritual. He doesn't want that. Everybody likes rituals, it seems. Humans do. But that's not the point. He, he, I just said, he wants to be worshipped spiritually. He's a spirit. He's not real in the sense of an object. Yeah. Well. You know, the Catholics have their uh, Hail Marys and Our Fathers on the beach. But beads. they are not Christian. So that the they are a huge cult. Yeah. yeah. So don't make excuses for them. Right. If they're doing something against God's uh, 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 admonition, why make excuses for them? So you you think the Roman Catholics? And when they do put something, God on the money, that is mixing religion and government. Okay. But yeah. the courts will not say that. Yeah. Because then they will be considered. Uh, irreligious, much like Democrats are considered totally irreligious because they are baby killers, well, because they are secular humans. Government is They're supposed to. Government is supposed to be separate from religion. That's correct, but not God's government, because God is a. Really? If you want to sense, if you want to put it in the sense, God's he's a dictator. It's got to be. You must way. only have his way. Period. Yeah. Well, uh, we, I got news for you. Republicans are not part of God's government. No, but they keep pushing this stuff on us. They're part of the other guy. You, ever, you see that banner with the with a giant image of Satan behind the Capitol building? You know, everything everything that comes out of Washington is very anti-Christ. That's right. Not pro-Christ. So then, why would you okay it? Like I said, there is such it, a thing. It, it, it's 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 not taking up a lot of space, and a lot of people uh, identify the cross with Christianity. But it is not. He was hung on a tree. Right. Not a cross. Right. But well. But 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 you're making it. The cross comes from Constantine. So, so what you're Emperor Constantine. So what you're saying and his is a stupid dream. What you're saying is that this cross made up of of a sheet of scrap metal from 9-11 is on public property and if it's on public property there should be nothing religious on public it's property. It's promulgating a cult. And the same thing that's the same thing with putting up uh, menor giant menorahs on public grounds during Christmas and uh, putting up Christmas oriented things on public grounds uh, shouldn't be there. Not according to the First Amendment. Let them the let them put up Christmas stuff in on church grounds. Let them do that on their own grounds. Or yeah, in, they in front can of do that, but they want it all. Or in front of synagogues. They want it all. They want it all. You know who said they that? They are proselytizers. You know who said that? Somebody who knew. I'm trying to think of his name. Somebody said he knew the whole all the Coke boys. Coke, How many are there? Coke, there's another Coke. Oh, good God. And he says, he questioned him about, you know, why uh, this, uh, uh, about how the obsession of greed is, and, and if you're already extremely rich, why do you want more? Yeah. And he just says that, uh, 
the Koch brother said that we de we want our fair share, which is all of it. That's right. So That's their right. their fair share is everything. Everything. They deserve it. They've made it. Joel Osteen. They've made it from God. But but we they, are the blessed ones. You they, you poor stuck the slob. You're nothing. But they 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 con they conjured up this a lofty, grandiose delusion of them of themselves, this uh, 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 higher higher than Mount Olympus image right. of themselves. This was conjured in their own minds. That's correct. Their legends but in their own minds. But they have legislated it into law, haven't they? That they're better than That's everybody else, and that That's they correct. they deserve, deserve it all. And desire it all. Correct. Mr. Nestle wants to own the water. Because he, he owns the water. Because he wants to. And he and can because he can. Exactly. And by paying off politicians he's allowed to. That's correct. And Alec. Controlling Alec. the world's water supply. Uh -huh. This is the man who said that people on earth do not have a right to drinking water. You don't have a right. Well, as I said, that uh, religious jumbaloni or whoever it was, I forget, said that the the Indians had no right to their land. No, we they had no right to steal it from them. <laughs> not, not us, because my family came over to the United States in the early uh, 1900s. Hey. But I mean, the uh, the European colonists, they had no right to steal it from them. He doesn't look at it that way. No. no. Anyway, we're going to break for lunch. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Uh, William J. Eisenman's uh, gastronomic delight, known as lunch, and I will join William H. Morrow III, our voiceover artist, for our meeting, for our show, and um, I believe uh, we're going to discuss more about animal rights, protecting animal rights, as well as... What about as those kids? Patterson. You're going to mention anything about that? Those kids that were thrown at the the chunks of concrete at the quattro, the poor cat. Yeah, they yeah. Had to be we're going we're to talk about them too. And yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. So anyway, we'll see when we get back. And then, of course, followed by our promo and commercial, our, we'll be after William Morrow. Okay. Gastronomic delight. Okay, we're here with William H. Morrow III, and uh, you know, uh, Billy, I noticed that uh, today people, Americans today seem helpless and clueless. Driving here today, I noticed young, able-bodied uh, men and women, some are teenagers, some are in their 20s, some are adults, not, not disabled. They have to press the button just to cross the street. They don't, they don't have the skills to cross a street anymore at the corner. I never press the button because I can run like the flash. I will be honest with you in my entire life, this is the honest to God's truth, I have never ever pushed, pushed a street like crossing button, ever. I never did it before and, in my life, never. And I never took my time crossing. I see a car, I would jog to make it easier for them, the cars yeah. too. In New where York, I, they do that. Where I come from, my town, some of these little punks, they slow down on purpose and take their sweet time crossing. Just the Ridgewood. punk. Yeah. They do that in Hasbro Kites too. The, usually, uh, the more pretentious, upscale neighborhoods, people Why? do that. Why? They're being spiteful. Because, Why? Because spiteful they, for what? Because they know that the... the, the um, the pedestrian has the right of way. They well, do it on maybe spike. Maybe change the laws. I think it's easier to stop two damn legs than it is a four thousand pound car. Isn't that jaywalking? What if the brakes fail? Isn't it jaywalking? Well, not if they're in the lines, but if they're not, then yes, it is. It can be jaywalking, yeah. If they're outside but the line. It, it, it's not only helpless but clueless too. I mean, people are indecisive. Well, they it's do rudeness. stupid. It's rudeness. Yeah. Why? Why do you do that? Why do you slow down intentionally? Why are you trying to slow it down, trying when you could break into a slight jog and cross? Like I did, my people, my peers, the whole bit. I Why break, do you slow down? I break into a jog, or, I, or if I have to run, I run, at, at a courtesy for the drivers. These are people I would love to get out on the football field. 
Oh, definitely. Let me face you for five, ten minutes. That's all I ask about. You know, because I drive and I know how it feels to deal with them. So I don't. I would never want to do it to another Why driver. Why do you want to be a punk? And Which, be, what's and, behind and this? bust people's Why? balls? Yeah. What's I, the point? What do you get out of it? Maybe, yeah. Maybe you're, the, you're cool. Every girl wants to date you. I don't think so. Maybe these are very insecure people that do things like this. No, either insecure or there are further issues. They're just a I'm natural... I'm going to take my time to make it hard for other people to slow down. You mean mis... I, because I have my rights. You mean misery likes company. They're miserable take people. Take away the rights. Yeah, exactly. You know? And and it goes the same thing with, you know, with the uh, politics, like people complain profusely uh, with all the things that Chris Christie does, but what do they do? They re-elect Chris Christie. Well, again, we talked about months ago. Now he's in for four more years. Mayor, former Mayor Marion Barry of Washington, D.C. is caught on camera selling, using, and I think dealing, I'm not sure, cocaine. He gets re-elected. How would you explain that to me? Mm-hmm. Okay. People complain about this president, that president, blah, 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 but they re-elect. It's, that's your chance to speak, but you're not making much of a bark. Exactly. You know, so, uh, you know, you really don't know, people don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Um, maybe the police brutality that we hear about, or homeless people getting beat up and killed, Maybe they're told well, by Washington to let's get rid of the poor. Let's, let's be get honest, rid of the we're, we're hearing about all this brutality by the police or whatever. It's, it's not widespread. Let's be fair. Here. The majority of cops are pretty darn good. They you really are. So you don't think it's epidemic proportions? No, no. My God, I know so many cops, and they are just wonderful. Uh, some areas, but when we hear about it, you're talking tens of thousands of cops. 30, 40, 50 issues of uh, police brutality a right. year or whatever. That's a very small percentage. So it's really, you know, a few bad apples don't speak for the entire force. You've had firemen commit arson so they could be the hero responding to a fire. And steal. That doesn't make all firefighters bad. Most firefighters are wonderful. A lot of my friends also, besides being cops, are firefighters. Fi firefighters. They are former teammates. They are wonderful, wonderful yeah. guys. So you only, on the news, you, you only hear about the bad. You're you right. only hear about the corrupt, co the corrupt you cops. You hear about one out of what? Thousands? That so it, it's a small, yeah. small percentage. You can't blame the whole brotherhood yeah. or wh whatever you want to call yeah. it. No. No yeah. chance. <clears throat> they are, for the most part, wonderful. You have former uh, uh, military veterans who fly off the handle and, be, and commit a mass killing. That doesn't speak for all veterans. Yeah. So well, there's another at, example. Look at the uh, that that uh, aspiring superstar football player that went to Iraq and he got shot over there oh, by friendly fire. Yeah, what was I, his I name know. again? Pat, Pat, White uh, guy from Arizona. Yeah, he was the Arizona Cardinals. Pat, I know him like a book. Well, I, well built guy. Yes. He 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 went to Iraq. Yeah. And he was but shot. He was killed by friendly fire, I believe. But the, it's it's. Very suspicious yeah. the way it happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's not friendly fire like, oops, we accidentally shot a, one or one well, of our you men. have in every war a lot of fragging. For those that don't know, fragging is where you kill your own out of anger and meanness. You don't like this guy. So, and that's sick and sad. You should be a brother. You're here defending. You should be the brotherhood. You don't kill your own. Hey, you're being shot at by the if enemy. If I didn't like you, Jimmy, yeah. I, you're by my side. I'm going to still protect you. Right. I'm not going to kill you. Well, you don't. Somebody told me no. in, in business, you do not have to like somebody to work effectively with them. It's possible to work with them as a team and not... We don't have to be, be best friends. But right. We're a unit. We're a team. We're right. Let's exactly. work together, okay? You know, and it's bad enough that the enemy's shooting at you, yeah. let alone your own people. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, um, that's why, you know, I always laugh at people at target practice. Okay, oh, you hit the bullseye. That's great. But guess what? The bullseye doesn't shoot back at you. Well, then get, design new bullseyes. <laughs> it's that simple. Yeah. Make the ones that shoot yeah. back. Now see how good you are. Now, speaking of targets, uh, you and I, and uh, as well as the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, we're animal lovers. Oh, I hate this topic. And it hurts. I think... It's gone way too far in epidemic proportions, animal abuse. Why? No, I, I think you're right and you're wrong. I don't think it's gone far enough. 
I think our, pedo- our legal system sucks. They don't penalize enough. When you get one, two, three months in jail, why is an animal's life less than a human's? Don't right. the argument. It's not. It's an animal. People say it was just a cat. It was just a dog. Don't give me that. And until you know and love animals like I do, like so many millions, probably billions around the planet. Yeah, do. but what about people that have experienced intelligence with animal, with cats and dogs, where they they have feelings, they bond with you? I saw a video of a dog operating a throwing machine so he could fetch his own ball. It was like a Jack Russell Terrier. Yeah. He went up, he he, he flipped a, a, a lever, the, the ball went into play, and he rick, and he catapulted the ball and went and caught it. Bottom line and bottom question, the, big major question. Yeah. Why are the penalties so basically nothing? Well, why why is the poor treated like subhumans and the homeless are invisible? Why? Well, like, why? Because of arrogant did you see that spot? arrogant that it was a, evil somebody did it for a term paper or a documentary for tv somebody for this documentary okay. had family relatives members husbands wives dress as homeless people and sit on the on the curb on the, well, not on the curb but on the sidewalk on the street you know all dirty and they had their spouses or whatever relatives unknowingly walk by and they said you didn't even look at me he goes, oh my God, that's my wife. Invisible. She goes, she goes, you wouldn't even look at me because you thought I'm homeless, but I'm your wife right here. Now it makes you think. Wow. Oh, they did it with all different types, types of contrasts. Husbands, wives, relatives, brothers, sisters, dressing up, they dirtied them up a little bit, put the rags on, had them sit along the sidewalk here like this, letting their head down. And people just walked on by, and then she yelled out, you just walk right by me. And he was like, oh my God. She was, and that's how you look at other people. Wow, incredible. Oh, did that, was that a wake up call for a lot of people? And you Sadly, know it only happens to those that it happened to. I wonder how much of a wake up call was it to society? Probably none. People are like, they don't care. Yeah, but you know, it's, it, it has happened, and it's very possible to happen again for a person who is uh, in a. Um, who is financially independent with a fantastic job to suddenly get laid off and and have well, their their home their mortgage for, foreclosed and end up on welfare the same way Jimmy, I told you about my dad just the last show right my father's friend was governor Connolly the first man shot during John, the John Connolly yes lost everything with the oil crisis back in the 70s uh, or 60s whatever it was they auctioned off his entire I mean it was a big mess and all its belongings everything was auctioned off everything he lost everything so so the now where's your brotherhood in politics where are your so-called friends why didn't they help to bail you out they I'd didn't like even know. offer well why was it auctioned off then jimmy john Connolly. apparently they didn't because why was it auctioned off and all your belongings if i had the money i said don't worry about it it's taken care of where were your so-called political friends your cronies they weren't there well apparently not it was auctioned off. Yeah. Your mansion and all its belongings. And back in the 60s or 70s, how much could it really have been? Let's be honest. Let's be fair yeah. here. It couldn't have been that much. A couple million, give or take, maybe. Right. Okay, we're not talking 20, 30, 40 million dollars here. So, right, so, so let's be fair. So for any arrogant, uh, heartless person with no compassion or empathy to, to treat the poor and the homeless like they were invisible. It could happen to them too. Well, the bottom line is, who do you like? And how do you judge who you like? And, and, they, and why do they sign around them or what? Yeah, why do they value human beings by, by money? Monetary uh, what possession? Value do you put, what value do you put on life and why? What value? How do you judge a person's value? Oh, he's homeless, he's dirty, he's, li- he's filthy, he's lying by the- along the sidewalk. He's worth nothing. Oh, hey, Mr. Gates from Microsoft, what a great man. I'm not making fun of Mr. Gates because he's a great philanthropist. But there's a-, a correlation. He's wealthy, people respect him more, but they look down upon a guy that's homeless. This is wrong. People are people, a human, a human, yeah. a life is a life, an animal is an animal. That, that's yeah, true. It's going to stop. And I like the connection you made with, with animal rights. Uh, it's It's... It's possible for that homeless man to have a PhD or a master's degree. And you know how many people out of work have big degrees? When I was out forming Supertech back in the late 80s with Ray, uh, 
when the limo was taking, this was in San Francisco, our first meeting, we were heading back to the San Francisco airport. There was a long line, way down the block and way up the block. I said, my God, what, what is that? The limo driver said, that's the soup kitchen line. And he wow. goes, do you know what? I said, no. He goes, the majority of those are engineers, well-educated men. We've had trouble in Silicon Valley, and they're laid off men. They're not just bums. Did you know that? You judge people because of the clothing or whatever, and they're super kids because you're immediately the stigma, you're a bum. No, you're not. And even if you are, you're a human being. Right. Bum or not. Well, the, the, there's really very little opportunities today in America for people to to pull themselves up by the bootstraps and be financially independent. The opportunities are just not there. Well, they are. You do have a lot of people making their own businesses, starting new businesses or what have you. But they got uh, breaks. You need that. You need government help or support and money. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just harder nowadays. It really is. So, you know. But, um, yeah, it's really... Um, do you know that a lot of the immigrants working in factories now, a lot of those immigrants were professionals back in their home country sure. with degrees? Well, I've got a great, a very good friend where I buy my beer every day at the liquor store I go to. Paul was a tremendous, tremendous doctor. He's got to go through all the tests again here. But you well, talk to this guy, again. he knows everything you bring up and he breaks it down and it shows you. He's brilliant. He's a brilliant, brilliant doctor. Had his own uh, practice the whole bit in Egypt. And now he, had to go, he has to go through the whole test again because he's in this country. It's ridiculous. And all of his other friends that are Egyptians that came over, they're doctors again. They had to go through the whole process too of being retested, reevaluated. Yeah. So, so it's incredible. Just to be in the United States, how many professional immigrants have to lower themselves to work in factories? Oh, yeah, well, you don't remember. From warehouses. The we used to go to the, the, the cafe at Barnes & Noble. When I, I knew Jose very well. He's one of the custodians there. Back in Cuba, he was a very well-known and well-respected professor. <coughs> and he said, Billy, I've had enough. I can't go through the retesting again. I just can't do it it's, anymore. It's ridiculous. But he was a great professor in Cuba. Yeah. Now, uh, getting back to animals, the, the abuse is totally despicable. I see it every day online. I, you know, these people are not human. The, to me, they're demons. You know, I hate to say this, people that, that have, abuse these kids that, that animals. Bought her last week, that little cat. Oh, in Patterson, New if Jersey. If it was me, I would publish their names, their addresses all over the world. And their faces, pick photos. I would say, here they are. These are the. No, they're not humans. Th these are the sociopaths. They're not human. That will probably grow up not to human. be. They might grow up to be maybe serial killers. Who knows? Who cares? But who cares? I care what you did now. And what I you mean, did was wrong. what they did to that poor cat. What be next? And that's just that's just the tip of the iceberg. What about people? I hear in the news about finding puppies and dogs oh, that me, that are starved. I know. I know. They I haven't, haven't been fed. You know, they're emaciated. How can you do this to Rip animals? sticking up, out. How can you do this to I see some of the ads where it showed the pup when it was rescued, and a few months later when it's been well fed, it looks beautiful, filled out. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, baby, yeah. And, and it's, the That's what counts. it's the same thing with some some crackhead mother in a ghetto throwing her, her, her newborn in a dumpster or something. We're a species and they make jokes about it. we'd like to hurt. Yeah. Not all, but a good... A good, yeah. fair percentage or amount. Well, you know, I don't know why. animals only hurt for two reasons: in self-defense and to eat. If they're predatory, to eat. Well, and to protect. And to, to yeah, self-defense. If yeah. they're young or being a threat, they would have. Exactly. Here, uh, it's always a logical reason. But humans do it at a sadism. Sport, out of sport. At a sadism. Just to hurt. A yeah. little quattro. At a sadism. Uh, I heard a situation where these all oh, these big tough macho hunters. Uh, up in uh, the, in Canada, they went to Canada. I think they might have been Americans, and they were camped outside of uh, uh, the den of a of a hibernating grizzly bear. Hibernate. So when it comes out, they just shoot it. So when it comes out that's from that's brave. Yeah. That's brave. Yeah. So when you're they, a big man. So so the bear is all groggy. You're a tough it, guy. It just woke up from hibernation. You're a tough guy. And they blast it as soon as it comes out. Oh, I'd love to go up there with my gun and I'd yeah, I shoot at them and miss them. I say, 
I'm hunting you. Hunting people. And I would chase them for days and scare the living you know what out. And of make them see how so it feels. I fight back. So I fight back. Yeah, well, you did, that bear didn't have a chance. I fight. I mean, I they're so they're so so tough and macho. So tough. What happens when there's an even playing field? How many guns did the bear have? None. Groggy is the same as being drunk, basically. So. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, I don't move this. It's like being this. drunk and just waking yeah. up after a long night of party, and then you and get blasted. And the law didn't do a thing, I guess. Honestly. I, I wasn't was, aware of the outcome. You know, I really was. Legal system, very good. Yeah, it's 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 totally despicable, and uh, it's got to stop. And I think animals deserve the same protective rights as humans. I agree. You know. So uh, anyway, it was um, not a good show. It was a good show, but it was a bad show in the way it was very sad. It's very sad. I hate these topics. They. They, they sadden me big time. I am an yeah. as you know, I'm an animal nut. I yeah. love animals, and it's just, uh, yeah. it just hurts. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. But, and but, I think about Quattro ever since I heard about this last week. So it's very. If I could get my hands on those kids, God help me. I would do things I normally would not do. Yeah. I, uh, you know. Well, uh, for those of you out there that uh, would like to employ the services of William H. Moore of the Third. Just uh, contact us at Mega Life Twenty One. Well, also, if you care about animals, do something. Right. Sign a petition. Simple. Do something. Don't just talk about it. Very simple. Hold your elected uh, uh, official your assembly, public service. Your congressman, your local politician, anybody, yeah. somebody, yeah. do something. Hold. Make, you have you have the power to make an impact. Yes. And the more people you have, strength is in numbers. Right. Do something, please. Hold your elected politicians' feet to the fire. People don't want to get involved anymore. Why? They don't get. You know what? You know what? Two friends of mine said, "Oh, you know we're not interested in politics. You know we just like to have fun and party." I says, "Yeah, while your country is going to hell in a handbasket." Yeah. Yeah. You don't you don't care about yeah. politics? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And Swear then they over. cry about the cost of living. I don't hear it. You don't have time? I don't want to hear about your crying. Though. I don't want to hear about your crying. Oh, no, you didn't? No, oh, you didn't vote? No. Oh, don't Remember complain. What you told me. Uh, I don't want to hear it. I'm sorry. If you don't vote, don't complain. That's right. It's as simple as that. Enough said. An old an, an old uh, retired Jewish man told me that many back in the 80s, people that do not vote do not have a right to complain. That's right. And uh, the, the, the age-old excuse, my vote doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, Strength in numbers, people. But other people are thinking the same way. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'm only one vote. And the other guy says, well, well I'm only one vote. doesn't count. Why are all these other people voting? Right. You're not what all these millions are. What's your argument here? If, like if everybody has that attitude, nobody would vote. Yeah. I, and and uh, the wrong people will get elected and realize It's and I can't be bothered. I don't want to go. I'd rather just sit back and bitch. That's what you want to do. You know what? There's a lot of lazy people in the United States, that's for sure. But anyway, it was great having you again. Thanks, Julie. All right. Take care. Next time, buddy. Okay, everybody, bye-bye. Hi, uh, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. Back from break lunch. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III, for a very invigorating show. All right, I salute him. Um, as we, um, you know, all of us are totally appalled and, and, and disgusted and sickened by the, uh, 
the rapid increase of uh, animal abuse and uh, it has to stop and I think animals deserve more rights than they already have. But um, anyway, just like our, uh, our promo says, the very best way to be a part of our organization and to join us is to get that free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. Go to newslettercensor.com. Okay, let us sink our teeth back into these readings. Okay, here we go. What do we got? An outbreak of antibiotic resistant salmonella linked to a California chicken producer. Why don't they name him? Why don't they name the chicken producer? If somebody is guilty of poisoning its consumers, mm -hmm. then you would think... You would think. It, it would be wise to, uh, to name them. But the media, the mainstream, the lamestream, whatever you want to call them, they are corporate protectors. But it's okay for the consumer to get sick or die. That's okay. But to to hurt the reputation of the culprit, of a corporation, is is something that's not done. Well, what happened with Mr. Monsanto Protection Act the other day? Don't say anything bad about Monsanto. Or well, your ass is grass, baby. Well, you know what? Along with uh, with uh, Secretary of State John Kerry, and uh, of course Chris Christie, as always, and um, we're, we're, we're going to throw um, uh, the uh, U.S. media into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. All three of them. Well, they're, they're there permanently anyway. Well, except John Kerry surprised me. So, you know. Anyway, this chicken producer continues to sicken people more than a year after it started. Despite the illnesses, producer Foster Farms... Oh, they mentioned it. But it's in the second paragraph. Forst Most people only read the first paragraph of articles in your newspaper. Foster, as in like Jody Foster? Fo Foster Farms. Foster Farms, you are hereby inducted into our Chisler's Hall of Shame. Shame on you this week. Has not initiated a recall. Really? And the government has no apparent plans to shut it down. Ah, uh, the government, contro uh, c controlled by corporatists. The uh. Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says there are, there were, 50 new reported illnesses in the past two months, bringing to 574 the total number of cases in the outbreak. Most of the illnesses are in California. Though centered on the West Coast, the outbreak is widespread. Victims came from 27 states and Puerto Rico. There had been no known deaths. The Agricultural Department says it is closely monitoring Foster Farms facilities. Oh, sure. What is that going to do? and that measured rates of salmonella in the company's products have been going down. Oh, whoop de do No penalizing at all. None. That's why all these companies, uh, corporations, want to get into all these treaties. That if you do something to prevent them from <gasps> Applying their trade and selling their products, you will have to pay them for their losses. Screw their losses. They, if they, if it's self-induced, 
you know, and they made and they made bad decisions, yeah. they should suffer. They should be they should be punished. Well, I was just going to say something, but I think I have something to read on it later about the uh, increase in CEO pay up to ten point five million dollars a yeah. year, two hundred and fifty-seven times the average worker's salary. Oh yeah. And what, what what work do they do? Nothing. And then when they they drive the company into the ground, they get a gold parachute. They're not even entitled to that. But the little guy, the employee, is not entitled to, to really anything. Well, if, uh, if you talk to the CEO of Papa John's Pizza, that arrogant, smug bastard that says that he, he's under no obligation to uh, share the company's prosperity with the employees. Well. And, and Bill Morrow said, you know, we, we bucked heads a little bit. You know, he says, well, he's right. No, he isn't. He's operating in our territory, using our roads, etc. You're talking the commons. about, you're talking about the commons. It. Yeah, his company wouldn't get off the ground if he was somewhere out in, 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 in Oklahoma in the plains Where he owns. with no roads, with nothing. No, he's in the commons. Yeah, Papa he's John, using the commons. Papa John Pizza is, is, yeah. is in, on public land. Okay. So he owes something. And like, it, what, who was it said? The same old, same old. I think it was Gary Null or somebody that uh, nobody makes it by themselves. That's true. How could they? We depend on things. There's no, there's no such thing as a totally self-made self business success or self-made millionaire. Mm. That's just their ego talking. Yeah. The department threatened to shut down Foster Farms facilities last year, but let them stay open after the company said it had made immediate changes to reduce salmonella rates. You notice they didn't say to get rid of it entirely, just to reduce the rates. Mm -hmm. Food safety advocates say it is long past time to pressure the company for a recall and to shut down production. It's very unclear why the USDA isn't taking more action to stop the sale of the product and protect the public. Foster Farms said this week that it has put new measures in place, including tighter screening of birds, improved safety on the farms where the birds are raised, and better sanitation in the plants. That still doesn't, doesn't provide restitution for the victims. The company suggested that the recent cases Maybe because salmonella increases in the warmer months. Uh, maybe this, and maybe this, and maybe that, and maybe this. It still does not... Uh, uh, it's still a bunch of excuses. There are excuses, and there is still no restitution for the victims. To let them be dirty. Dirty. It's, dirty. There's no punishment involved here. Well, there never is. Look mm -hmm. at Wall Street. Monitoring is not punishment. Dealing with outbreaks is nothing new for Foster Farms. The company was linked to salmonella illnesses in 24, 2004, then again in 2012, before the, thir the current outbreak, which started in 2013. In a letter from the USDA to Foster Farms last October, the department said inspectors had documented fecal material on carcasses. If you think that's bad, wait until you read when you log into Facebook, wait until you read the uh, article about what is really in our pet food. Oh, no! Oh, boy. It's worse than we thought. Dead carcasses, roadkill. Everything and anything, including uh, 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 dead, dead dogs and cats. Dead, dying Cannibal, disease. Which, which is a form of, uh, of cannibalism when they're using meat 
from their own kind in their in their own pet food. Oh yeah, that's what the uh, cows ended up with the uh, Kreitzvent, the uh, you know the uh, what the hell they call that the, the brain thing. Mad cow disease. Mad cow. Yeah. Sick animals, like you said, roadkill animals that passed the sick. Hey, mainland China was processing uh, uh, chickens found dead. You know, uh, with fecal matter on the carcasses and, and processing them for exportation to make money. This is like profit at any cost. This attitude, Ooh. Ooh. profit above above people and the planet. We have poor sanitary dressing practices, insanitary food contact services, insanitary non-food contact services and direct product contamination. In January, USDA inspectors briefly closed a Foster Farms plant after finding cockroaches. Recalls of poultry contaminated with salmonella are tricky because the law allows raw chicken to have a certain amount of salmonella. Allows it? Really? A rule that consumer advocates have long lobbied to change. Well, the government allows a certain percentage of, of rodent uh, uh, in, in, in uh, processed meats. Yeah, and shit. Rat shit. Rat these are, shit, these yeah. are all uh, laws to help big business, yeah. in, my, in my opinion. Yep. You know, I mean, I, I, I gotta, I gotta give credit where credit is due. Where's my shillelagh? I'm gonna salute the companies that that make kosher, kosher foods like uh, Hebrew National, you know, hot dogs and uh, other all companies that make kosher food. They don't take any shortcuts for profit. You know, they go out of their way to put out very high quality uh, meats, cold cuts, whatever, salami, you know, and uh, and nobody is making them do this. They're doing it on their own, which is a good thing. Yeah, well, you know, and you, you can taste the difference too. I'm not... This is not a paid advertisement. I'm just giving my opinion that I could taste the difference. And uh, there's a good reason why you can taste a high quality. You can see it. You know, uh, uh, these companies are, because of deregulation, are allowed to do what they do. Coming back to Governor Christie. Yeah, we always seem to come back to him, right? Governor Christie has validated his presidential bid by following the now traditional Republican philosophy, help big corporations and make a desperate workforce pay for it. Tax credits of hundreds of millions of dollars have been given to corporations, while a slightly larger amount was denied to the state pension system. It's a cute gimmick, because when the pension system, not the corporations, goes bankrupt, Christie, to use his own phrase, will be a footnote. Long gone! Yeah. And the corporate giveaway was on top of the serious sums of tax dollars paid by Christie to a legal team of his friends to issue a report exonerating him from wrongdoing in the George Washington Brigade Bridge uh, 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 debacle. Anyone who thinks an aide ordered that stunt knows very little about politics. Then the plug was pulled out on the homestead rebate for the third time in five years under Christie. As president, his corporate gifts would undoubtedly run into tens of billions of dollars. And if the books didn't balance, 
would he simply refuse to allow the IRS to send out tax refunds? The National Republican Party will certainly embrace him, but we the people should be certain he is not elected. We the people should be certain that uh, no Republican is elected to anything, not even dog catcher. There you go. There you go. Speaking about dogs. Oh. What could compel a band of boys, some as young as eight years old, oh to brutalize a neighborhood cat so badly that it soon died? Uh, uh, sociopaths, future sociopaths. Future sociopaths, yes. And and the and the way of thinking that's in these neighborhoods, these uh, inner city ghetto neighborhoods, their their overall way of thinking, without any value on on, on life, human or animal. No even their own. Even their because own. Because they take drugs and disabuse their body. Well, they uh, they're also I mean, they, they also grow up to be. Teenagers involved in violent crimes. Boy, gang members. <coughs> oh man. Questions, questions like this uh -huh. were on people's minds as they reacted to the news of the shocking attack. Did the boys' home lives influence their behavior? Does their attack on the cat predict the future of crime? Yes. Just as many of the country's most notorious killers had been found to have abused animals in their youths. Psychologists and criminologists in interviews last week said that the abuse the boys are accused of is hardly uncommon across the United States. And that while the youth of the boys is startling, it's the best sign they could be turned around if authorities intervene quickly. Well, people don't don't care if a homeless person is, is lying on, uh, on the sidewalk. Or being sucked in with a python. Being, or being swallowed by a python. Or, you know, there's one instance where a <clears throat> homeless person was attacked and stabbed in, uh, in New York. I think it... You know, I forgot where it was, but... Uh, he was uh, motionless on a sidewalk, and people just stepped over him and did not bother to call 911 on their cell phones. Hmm. It yeah. has to be an all-out, hands-on-deck treatment. These kids have to be caught early and helped by teams of providers working on the child and the family, the boys. No, they should. They should see jail time. They, they should. They are being charged. They, they at, least, at least some of them. No, even the eight-year-old. I would throw him in the fucking slammer. The they, boys. Hardcore justice. Allegedly cornered the male cat in an alley near school number four on May the seventh and pelted him with stones and chunks of concrete, according to two boys who said they intervened to stop the attack. An animal rescue worker later took in the badly injured male cat, which came to be called Quattro. Experts said the brutal attack, despicable as it was, offers a chance to shine a light on not so uncommon occurrences of animal cruelty in society. And for law enforcement to demonstrate they take such crimes seriously. People are cruel to, uh, to fellow humans. Uh, uh, just the other day, an, uh, an elderly woman was mugged and punched in the face, uh, you know, sucker punched by a, a man and, and, uh, and a woman that uh, stole her purse, you know. Uh, 
you know, that, that, that stupid fad that was going around that where yeah. people would walk up to a stranger and sucker punch them. Yeah. And then there was another case where uh, uh, a 22-year-old uh, young lady in the subway, New York City subway, was uh, was just sucker punched uh, uh, for no reason at all. It turned out the uh, the the, uh, the 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 friend that was with her—I don't know if it was her boyfriend or not—chased the guy down and and put him in a headlock and and tried to hold him and recognized him by name. He knew where he was. The guy squirmed and got away. He, he uh, got out of the of the uh, headlock and got away. But he identified him by name. You know, just going up to a stranger and just punching them. There has to be uh, ramifications for uh, these actions in a civilized society. There has to be uh, harsh punishment. <clears throat> Although police have announced no arrests, at least some of the alleged attackers were suspended by the school district and are to receive counseling. counseling. Authorities said they were working to identify all the youngsters, most recently requesting surveillance footage from a nearby public housing building that may have captured the attack. I said it before and I'll say it, it again. again. Children in this modern era in the United States have been coddled, protected, and spoiled way too long. It's time it's about time to uh, bring back the old-fashioned way of doing things. When the children are identified, psychologists said they need to receive serious treatment, more than what the school can provide. Oh, the psychologists, leave it up to them to feel sorry for these little monsters. Tanelli said the best counseling would involve the boys and their families because children who are cruel to animals often live in homes where parents are violent toward each other or their children. A review of child abuse incidents in New Jersey in the 1980s found that parents or the children themselves had killed or injured a pet in 88% of the cases. Well, I don't think children um, are being spanked nearly enough. I think if parents, you know, both father or mother, got involved with their kids and uh, laid down some serious uh, justice, like the old days, I think you would have less hooligans running around, less. Uh, uh, little demons, little criminals running around. This is different from, I don't like school rules. I won't listen to my <coughs> mommy, Tanelli said. Describing the state of mind of children who abuse animals, they have elements of deceitfulness, cruelty, and major violations of the law. At least one of the children in the group, likely, would have a diagnosis of a serious psychological disorder. The four to five others may show signs as well and should be evaluated in isolation. But their behavior may have reflected an ugly side of human nature that can come out in a peer or a group context. Phil Arco, an animal protection advocate who trains law enforcement and social workers in identifying signs of animal cruelty, said he recommends that specialists use a program that teaches children accountability for their actions and empathy. The children who attacked Quattro probably lack the ability to put themselves in his position. Maybe they lack oxytocin. You know what? They're handling this situation with kid gloves. They're, 
oxytocin and, and counseling and in psychology a law because they don't really and have feeling sorry for the little demons. Because I say, they really don't have a law. The say, law excuses youngsters. Yes, and, and we don't have uh, appropriate animal rights laws either. That too. That too. I mean, uh, 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 abusing and attacking and brutalizing or killing an innocent animal is in a lot of ways similar to uh, to serious child abuse because you know you're dealing with a an innocent mind an innocent entity that has feelings and feels pain and suffers and you know what I mean so it, it uh, animals are very childlike in their in intelligence so they, they deserve much better rights than they have. Such acts of cruelty are far more common than people may think. Sure. Except that they are not usually reported or prosecuted. You know, Arkow said he has seen more of the cases in inner cities. New Jersey, like most states, does not require statistics on animal cruelty crimes to be logged in any meaningful way. Yeah, because uh, because Chris Christie uh, probably cut programs, cut fundings to programs like that. And this discourages police from taking complaints seriously. The family of the boys who stopped Quattro's attack said they called police twice, but they do not believe any officers arrived. Besides, I think the waiting time in Patterson is like 35 minutes for a cop to come. Something like that. Yeah, well, they, they severely cut down on the police force in Patterson. And, you know, and uh, what happened was, uh, with the last governor, I'm not sure which one, Patterson received uh, a great deal of money in uh, funding to, to help the city. And uh, they just pocketed the money. The uh, crony capitalism, the crony politicians in City Hall, everybody just made the money disappear. And uh, the state of New Jersey refused, uh, I mean Christie in, in particular, does, you know, has no incentive to give them more money. You know, they were asked, well, show us what you did with the previous funding. <laughs> it just, also in response to the attack. Patterson's animal control officer, John DeCando, is planning an assembly of school number four to put focus on compassion toward animals. He also called for the launch of a pet therapy program for juvenile delinquents. He's been working on for months with psychologists and judges. You can't rehabilitate these monsters. I don't know, they have a program with the dogs in the prisons. Yeah, where they uh, it's working where, out where, pretty well. When I guess, oh yeah, I've seen it. I, um, I've seen it. I've seen there's a show about it. This is not something to shake your head about and let it go. A candle lighting ceremony outside the police station is scheduled for June the fifth at seven thirty p.m. Most young boys admit, in surveys, to exploratory animal abuse, which might include harming mice, pulling the legs off spiders, or touching ants with a magnifying glass. Uh-oh. Whoa! It's raining! It's raining! ants with a magnifying glass. That's what you meant. What you say, touching? What the hell did that mean? Yeah, you're I burning used to, her ass. Burn them. I used to. Oh, excuse me. Torching. 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 Die, die. I used to do that with newspaper or any paper. You could start a campfire if you have the sun. But then, if it's night, you can't start the campfire. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the, the sun with a magnifying glass works like a charm. But that behavior does not always usually extend 
to companion animals such as cats or dogs. Raise your volume. A 1999 study found this. You might have to close the door. No, the gun's coming in. That's not for that, it's for the noise. Oh, yes. You got a point. About people who were prosecuted for animal cruelty. Wait. Thirty percent or more likely to engage in violent crimes or drug abuse. Animal abuse is one of the fifteen symptoms psychologists have identified in children with conduct disorder. Billy Jr. Ah. Uh. Several studies have drawn parallels between adult criminals and animal cruelty, often committed at a young age. Pets were abused by parents or children in 50 out of 57 child abuse cases reviewed in New Jersey. Sexually abused boys between ages 2 and 12 were 30% more likely to be reported by parents as having been cruel to animals. About 25% of criminals who showed aggressive behavior in prison admitted to five or more childhood acts of animal cruelty. Animal cruelty defendants ages 11 to 76 were found to be 37% more likely to be charged as an adult with a violent crime, drug offense, or disorderly conduct. Women who were victims of domestic violence reported that a partner injured or killed a pet 50% more often than non-victims. Hmm. Very, very uh, important article. Very uh, deep, heavy-duty reading. It's uh, very apl applicable to the uh, the lack of compassion and lack of empathy society that we have today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Senate. Republican leader Mitch McConnell, old ugly turtle face, turtle face, yeah, of Kentucky, dispatched his Tea Party cow challenger with ease on Tuesday, and first-time candidate Michelle Nunn won the Democratic nomination for a seat from Georgia qualifying for fall elections that will decide control of the United States Senate. The Republicans need six, I believe. Six more than they have and now. they have now, yes. Six more. On a six-state primary night, Allison Lundergren Grimes easily captured the Democratic nomination to oppose McConnell in Kentucky in a race expected to be among the costliest and most competitive in the country. In Georgia, seven Republicans vied for the right to oppose none in the fall, with a two-way primary runoff likely in July. McConnell called Grimes an empty dress. An empty dress. He's an empty turtle shell. Uh, uh, we haven't heard these all day. Liberty bells. How much time we got left? Well, we're probably overdue, but.
Let me get a short one out of the way. Here. Okay. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe do sir. Give me that one. Is that the one you wanted? No, I'm gonna do this one first. There you go. Actually, I think it stopped. I think so too. Stop! Stop! Stop for a little while. Pakistan. A pregnant woman was stoned to death on Tuesday by her own family outside a courthouse in Lahore because she married the man she loved. He was a non. Uh, was he? Was he a non-Muslim? The families or? choose your mate in Pakistan. Pre-arranged marriages? That, like, that, that sucks. Well, no kidding. Like India, uh, uh, well, not all, but a lot of them still do. She was killed while on her way to court to contest an abduction case her family had filed against her husband. Her father was promptly arrested on murder charges, a police investigator said adding that the authorities were working to apprehend all those who participated in this heinous crime. Heinous, heinous, heinous crime, well... Heinous. And, and, and a, a heinous crime, premeditated murder, right, and a perfect example of religious fanaticism. Otherwise and known no as freedom. nuts. No religious freedom. nuts with no freedom. Arranged marriages are the norm e among conservative Pakistanis. And hundreds of women are murdered every year in so-called honor killings. Carried out by husbands or relatives as punishment for suspected adultery or other perceived transgressions. Perceived. Perceived is the key word. Stony in public settings are extremely rare. Tuesday's attack occurred on a major downtown thoroughfare before a crowd. Police identify the woman as Faranza Faranzana Parveen, 25. Uh, Said she had married Mohammed Iqbal, 45 against her family's wishes after being engaged to him for years. Her father, Mohammed Azim, had filed a duction case against Iqbal, which the couple were contesting. Abduction? She's 25 years old. She's, uh, she's over the, the uh, she's uh, uh, of legal age. Well, not under Islamic law. The, the women have no That's rights. That's right. They have no rights. That's right. Now let's get quick a quick uh, dear Abby here. Well, not the original Abigail Van she's Buren. Dead. She, she's taking the big dirt sleep, right? Yes. I met the most wonderful man. Really? On a dating site. Uh, we seem to hit it off. In fact, we are falling in love. <laughs> but he isn't ready for an exclusive relationship and still wants to date. Well, is she pushing it too fast? Or? He gets on the dating sites when I'm asleep in his bed. Oh. I really care for him, but I don't want to pressure him. He has told me he loves me. <laughs> Why is he? But right now, he just wants to be friends. Why is he surfing on the... Yeah, while he's banging her. He says, <laughs> I should also date. Oh, he, he How wants do a, you turn off love? He wants love. Sounds like he is, she is his uh, fuck buddy. In t <laughs> ah. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like they're, uh, the, the, she's a booty call. That's it, exactly. I don't know. Uh, booty call. I don't see love there. If there was love. making a booty call, man. If there was love there, he would have uh, 
turned off his account, his profile. Or done it in the afternoon or something. On the dating site. Yeah, well, not, in, not, not right from her bed. <laughs> uh, dear, sad, and confused. You're, you're a sad and confused idiot. Please don't think I'm unkind. But when a man is falling in love with a woman, he does not creep out of bed in the dead of the night to visit dating sites. True. He doesn't tell her to date other people either. Although you may love this guy, from where I sit, when he says he just wants to be friends, it means friends with benefits. Yeah, not like, not the woman's definition of, <laughs> of just friends. Because you are looking for more than that. The next time he gets out of bed to peruse a dating site, you should go with him on your way out the door. Well, first of all, first of all, why is he He's he's getting out of her bed. Why is he getting into her bed? Well, that's what that is, 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 saying. is my question. <laughs> you get up with him and you leave and let him go on his stinking day. And, don't, and, don't, and don't let the door hit you in the ass. Exactly. Go home and, and go on the dating site all you want. Not in my house. Okay. And I would definitely sh shut off the gravy train as the, far as the booty train, the booty train rather booty train because uh, yep. his, her, uh, her goals and his goals are not the same. Uh, no meeting of the minds. He wants to play the field and mess around and she <coughs> wants a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. So maybe you think he might have lied to her about wanting a serious relationship just to get in her pantalones? Well I don't know how it grows that uh, you know without uh, some but the, the, the instances on the other side. Weren't there any red red flags popping up? I'm sure up there were. In her head, it, as she as she's falling in love with this guy, there should have been some red flags popping up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sure there were. She just avoided them. She put them on the back burner in in, in her subconscious. Whatever mm -hmm. she she shoved them to the back. Exactly. Uh. uh ah. What are you gonna do? Human psychology. What the hell? What can I do? What can be done? The weather is the weather. What can be done? Like uh, the pow of Vulcan said on Star Trek. Thank you for joining us for this week's uncensored, hard-hitting truth. It was rather invigorating to say the least. So was the weather. And we'll uh, see you next time. Changeable. Uh, this is no uh, holiday show, right? There's no holidays. Uh, I think the next so-called Father's Day. Nobody cares about Father's Day. I know, but it's in the, Nobody it's in June. cares about Father's Day. Look, Sometime in June. Anybody can be a Faja. Uh, you know, I got that from Austin Powers Gold Member. Any anybody can be a Faja, a father, but but you can only have one mother. Uh, I mean, uh, any man can spill his uh, scum guppies and, fo la 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 la. and foidalize an egg. By the way, speaking of scum guppies, the Fourth of July eggs, is the next holiday. Yeah. And eggs and contraception and yeah. conception and stuff. Last night, or was it the night before, on Facebook? I think it was Mr. Drummond, I'm not sure. Martin Drummond. Excuse me if I'm wrong. But he used the quote. It was concerning uh, abortion. And he said, last time I looked in the Bible, Adam was not alive until God breathed the breath of life into him. That's what you said. I know. That's what the Bible says. Right. Did, did Drummond so acknowledge it? Yes. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that's... I agree. But the but the Republicans, the conservatives, believe that when the scum guppy and the ovum come together, that's when life begins. That's not what the Bible life says. Life begins at conception. 
Now, let's understand something. In the Garden of Eden, God, the Word, the one that became Jesus, creates this human being out of the dust of the ground. And the human being is just lying there. He's inanimate. He has no energy. He has no uh, life in him. Until God breathes the breath of life into him. Right. And the same so, thing happens to a baby, right? So you got the fetus, the embryo, the fetus, etc. And then he comes out and he breathes. There you go. But these he becomes a living being. But these uh, these cultist lunatics, these evangelical lunatics, believe that a fertilized egg is a human being. Right. You're out of your mind. You have no facts to back up your uh, agenda, your, your ideologies, delusions. Illu delusions. Yeah. So anyway, we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. See you next time. We'll see you next time. Say, say so long to these people. Yeah. This has been a Megalife 21 production.